Welcome to Trade the NBI.com. This is John. This report is for well, April 20th, 420. Uh, so who knows what will be going on on Twitter. Uh, Elon Musk's uh, popular day. Market. We had the MBI uh, Magenta you know, leading slightly above, even though things were in a decay. And all it took was a little positive. And what we got was the dip back to the 50%. And again, uh, strong buyer activity at that particular level. And boom, started to shoot up. And then it caught fire as the orange here began to make that dive. And we got the crossover of midterm buyers on DOC Red because we talked about that having dipped into that... Uh, uh, oversold area and that it was coming right on to the 50% worth noting in Q standpoint still weaker um, just getting back to the 50% it was actually above it and then sold off later in the day a um, little more work to get it above the white but it's still positive uh, from that standpoint you get the just like on the S&P the steel rising above uh, cyan and that um, it was weaker in the sense that we looked, noticed that we didn't have the move of the extreme above the red line, but there it did, um, and came back and retested all the way back to the 38. So they're just slightly askew from their um, Morganacci lines relative, but uh, the readings are pretty consistent. We're just seeing that the NASDAQ is uh, doesn't quite have the same strength power at this particular stage. Uh, from a Euro standpoint, <laughs> We don't even need to talk about it. It's the same as it's been. Um, though a bit potential for bounce here, given the fact that uh, the white dip all the way back under here with Magenta is still uh, leading. But we haven't seen any uh, significant dip in that orange. Uh, if that particular starts to cave a little bit here, um, then we might see what we're seeing from the uh, S&P on that reading. It hasn't happened yet. So most of this was... Um, Big excitement off of uh, both commodities, gold uh, major uh, dive, so to speak, here, as well as uh, oil, if we look at oil as well. Um, but again, still over that 100 area. And interestingly enough, you know, we just saw articles coming out about the potential that um, after the French elections that uh, the EU will ban all Russian oil. And if that happens, then... Phew, 100 is going to seem cheap, and that will be, uh, everyone will be looking fondly back at the time it was uh, that low. That would be crazy for them to do, uh, not out of the realm of possibility, but um, bizarre if it did. I mean, I, you know, it's pure speculation at this particular stage, but um, uh, certainly not something that they would dare do before the uh, French election. That would definitely skew it uh, in a result they're expecting Macron to win. So uh, you wouldn't want to throw fire on that by throwing uh, already tumultuous uh, European uh, gas oil markets uh, into a frenzy that would just uh, have global implications regardless uh, because it will tighten up supply dramatically and force the U.S. even if they're tapping the strategic petroleum reserve you can only do that for so long to make up the differences, particularly if you're going to cut off uh, additional. They're still taking quite a bit of Russian uh, oil and gas, so it's not like that wouldn't be insignificant. Treasuries, again, now we're below 120. Uh, this is all within expectations, and, um, you know, we were looking for those blowout numbers for uh, housing uh, in March, as well as we should see it again here in April as well uh, to... Uh, really justify what's going on because um, everyone's expecting that great increase in May. The question now is going to be whether it's 50 point or 75 point. I don't think many people believe in the three, three quarter of a point uh, hike by the Fed. Uh, they're so far behind anyway. It makes sense from an economic standpoint, uh, from a practical standpoint. I just don't see them doing it. They've not been... Uh, poignantly aggressive or even relatively aware of uh, what's been taking place <laughs> generally. So uh, they'll live in their own little world. And I know they're more concerned about their balance sheet and how they're going to spin those things off smoothly without major disruptions. And um, so far they've been successful with that. And I think that that's where, you know, we're going to typically see uh, around that 4350 range uh, buying and stuff simply because it... Uh, um, really promotes uh, the opportunity for them to uh, be more aggressive with that if they're able to keep the market elevated. Am I suggesting that they're directly involved in supporting price? 
not necessarily at this level, but I think the psychology is there that um, should anything begin to falter, it will be a pause in future rate hikes, which uh, would effectively represent quantitative easing in a return. So back and forth with that. Uh, Bitcoin caught its bid early on in the uh, GAM reading right there um, in the gold and went kind of flat because the MBI white, but uh, as soon as the magenta tipped back over, it took off to the upside. So that was fairly decent. From a 50k standpoint, well, from the buy green right there, was kind of flat for a bit. Uh, I'm sorry, this is uh, Urethum, uh, Ethereum, uh, ETH, and it caught that move and went uh, all the way back up to this 100% and really just retraced to the 50 and then back up. Uh, when it gets this much of an incline, you end up getting this compression range, um, which is still quite a bit uh, of movement. Um, it's just uh, looks a lot smaller. Uh, and as we go forward in time, it'll start to uh, increase overall. Now to the 50K. So we had that awkward basing period where things were just evening out. We had done with the now there really wasn't any major deep move of the shakeout lower and we were really hovering around zero and then once the um, gold started to rise here it's just a matter of waiting for uh, improvement in shakeouts and literally began right there uh, along with the crossover and you had steel crossing so you had a lot of confluences within those and boom took off from there intraday uh we had a, the day with that giant rally faded all the way back uh, during the overnight session and came all the way back down to the same 4371 and literally uh, supported uh, pretty decent off that and started to see P2 improvement in that from a uh, uh, shakeout standpoint uh, so and as well as higher red DOC pivots in that and then that just led to uh, start of the wave move and once it got going it just kept going. There wasn't anyone interested in stopping it. Uh, later part of the day, faded back a little bit. There's a lot of positive extremes within that. Some that we've already had, just a little bit lower than uh, previous ranges. So the lowest bottom of there would be right around the 4400 range, 4404. Uh, but then you have a series of them that come up through there. And then moving on across, we dip back down and started to back over. Uh, picking up to a pretty strong move there uh, before backfilling um, all of those uh, little positive extremes that caused that little up thing. So as we fill in some of those, it, it allows for the continuation of it. Uh, it would not be impossible to see some weakness pull back and fill in uh, a few of the other ones, uh, potentially an after hour kind of move. But uh, overall, uh, really strong and uh, fairly uh, active day. You can complain about these number of movements. Uh, both up and down have been excellent, uh, even if the market is relatively where it's been for quite a while here. But uh, that volatility, again, enough to scare some people out of things, making things a little bit easier for the algos to manipulate. And that's when we get some of these nice, uh, clean runs, I like to call them, and it just becomes very effective uh, just following the paint bar and that. As always, though, I will see you on the Skype chat. Trade well. We'll talk to you later.